illustrations by Pete. Hello everybody and welcome to another video. This is going to be a little bit more lighthearted. Uh, oh, hopefully you could tell that from the title. But today I'm going to be doing two things. One thing I'm going to do is review the Rotring Isograph pens. And the reason that I'm going to do that is because it's an obligatory thing. I mean, um, if you draw any kind of abstract art or doodles or anything like that, everybody expects you to at some point in time address the Rotring Isograph. Now, when I first got these, I thought they were great. I would use them quite a bit. It, it was a, a, a fun experience. They, they do make you want to doodle a little bit, but there are some positives and negatives about this pen. Okay, the, the first thing is if you notice, you're having a hard time seeing the point of the pen. That's because you have to hold them more upright. Now I used the bigger nib, I used a 0.7 in this video, and that was because I wanted you to be able to see the tip of the pen a little bit, and I could hold it at a little bit more of an angle for most of those things, but I couldn't really, I still had to hold it a little bit more straight up. You'll see that I struggle a little bit I'm going to try and overcorrect that sometimes with holding it further down the barrel so you can see the tip a little bit. I also have the camera at a little bit more of an angle so you can see it a little better. But really, yeah, it, it, there's a little bit of a problem. You got to tilt it. It cuts out on you if you tilt it too much. That's because there's a mechanism in there that moves the ink and it's just, it's just the nature of the pen. Here's the thing with them. They will scratch softer paper. And since this is the Etra sketchbook, is the hot press, but it's still a, it's a very soft paper. It's like a cushiony paper. I, I've mentioned that before. It's, I love the paper and I love drawing on it, but it's just with these isograph pens, they tend to scratch the paper. I don't like that. So I try not to draw with them on this. And since this is what I usually draw on, that poses a little bit of a problem to me. Now, if I'm going to draw on like a Strathmore mixed media paper or something like that. You can use them and they'll, they'll be okay. They'll scratch it a little bit less. They'll still scratch it, but just a little bit less than a soft paper like this. Now, what I prefer to do is use like a regular fine liner. I enjoy fine liners, regular fine. Now, I know that the argument here would be that, yes, but the fine liners you use up and then you throw away. And I, I agree, I understand it can be a little bit more wasteful, but it doesn't work. So if you have a tool that doesn't work, even if it's better, it still doesn't work. So it's only better for one reason and, and not the other at all. But uh, these ice graphs are a little bit messy. Uh, I filled it up and when you push that back end back on, it tends to push that ink out the front and you got to clean it up again. Now I will say this, the ink from the isograph, the regular Rotring ink is easy to clean up. It, it got on my hands a little bit. I went and washed it with some soap and water and it came off just fine. It, it didn't stain my fingers. You see my fingers there are not stained and it was all over my fingers. So uh, that's, that's a good thing. That is a really good thing. The other thing is they are, they are nice to use. But a big thing that people say about them is that they are, uh, they produce more of a solid line and less of a variation. Most fine liners don't really produce a variation. If you're getting variation off of a fine liner, it could be because you're holding it differently each time. Uh, most of the time there's that same little nub and it's the exact same size. It's not really flexible, but if you hold it on edge, you can get a thinner line. If you hold it more upright, it's a thicker line. That's just how they are. But it's not dramatic. It's not really like using a brush pen or something like that. You can use that and still get the same straight, solid line width across the whole thing. Matter of fact, if you look here, I can get some varying line width on this too, but that's because it's the thicker one. The thinner ones, it, it's harder to do. You pretty much get the same exact line weight the entire time of drawing, but that's okay. Now, I'd say in the long run, they, they're a little bit more maintenance 
and they're a little bit more difficult but when you start to if you just pull one out and you haven't used it in a while and you go to start drawing with it it can be stuck you might have to open it up clean it out a little bit get the you shake it up and down there's a little mechanism inside that moves the ink around a little bit and gets it going again it's it's okay it's fine the thicker the nib that you're using the more of course the more flow you'll have so if you use something that's a little bit thinner sometimes it's harder to get that started but i've not really had any trouble getting it i've set them on the shelf for a month or two and then picked it up and tried to draw with it no problem it still operates you just have to work with it for a second and once it starts flowing again everything's fine all in all i really still like using the regular fine liners and um, fountain pens. I love drawing with fountain pens. It's probably my favorite thing to draw with. The only thing there is that most of those inks are, are water soluble and so they dissolve if you put anything over them, which I like to do. Okay, so now I want to talk to you about something else. Do you understand how space toilets work? Basically, they just eject everything out into space. It's like we're using space as our cesspool. We're just sending it out there. But here's the thing that puzzles me. After we do this over and over and over, we then have someone somewhere who says they found something on an asteroid or something like that and just some space debris or sometimes on a planet and they say oh look there could be evidence of organic material on this planet or on this asteroid of course there is it just went through our poop belt it, you know it just it just got our that stuff got there and so what they're doing is they're finding stuff that we've left behind and then they they're all surprised like like hey they just found this huge discovery it's not really a discovery you just found a, a single cell organism from someone's intestines that you know hit an asteroid or something that this isn't a, a huge thing so every time i'm not saying i'm not saying that they there can't be something found on another planet what i'm saying is these people i don't know if they're ruling anything out you know i don't know if they're saying hey look we found this this stuff over here and they're not understanding that it, it could come from us we send a lot of stuff up up there and some of that stuff just gets kind of shot out into the middle of nowhere and sometimes it could hit something and that thing could be on its way to us and then we find it and we think we made a discovery. Is everyone following what I'm saying here? I don't think it was a discovery. It was like we put something somewhere and then said, oh look, we found something. You just put it there. Anyway, I hope these brilliant minds are taking this into consideration when they say that they find stuff and they get people all in an uproar and they say, oh look, we found this stuff, we found this stuff. I think I've seen probably four or five different articles over the last year of people claiming that they might have found something, uh, some organic material or, or a single remnant of a single cell organism or something. And it always ends up being not true. It, they're just trying to sell interest in whatever, whatever company they're writing the article for. And they just want to more people that they can get to look at that thing, the more ads they can put on it and the more money they can make. So, they're just kind of selling something, but people get excited about it. And, and then they turn around and say, oh, it ended up, it was something else. It was, it was not real. Maybe, maybe they should really understand what they find before they tell people about it. Because people get excited sometimes. And people get quite into whatever they're doing. And, you know, you don't, especially, it, that's their interest. That's their, what they're interested in. And then someone says, hey, we might have found something. People get all crazy. And really, you know, it was like a, you know, piece of corn or something, I, whatever. Anyway, this drawing was inspired by that because what I pictured is what if we found something on another planet that actually could not have just been something, you know, that was shot out of a space toilet? What if they found something on another planet that was actually interesting and maybe uh, you could tell someone had actually constructed something. And so 
that's what I did here in this drawing. I I, const I, I said if if there was another planet and they showed up and this was on it, now that could be a discovery. They could say, hey, look at that. We don't know what this weird thing is. We don't know what it represents. We don't know who made it. But look at this thing. This is something that was not shot out of a space toilet. At least I don't think so. And you know what else I love? I love when people give you advice, but they don't understand what they're giving you advice about. And I talk about advice a lot. I know I do, but that's only because there are so many people. There are so many incompetent people who try to give you advice without knowing anything about what you're doing. So someone gave me advice recently and they said, hey, you, you know, you, you do a lot better with these videos um, and get more, more time people watching them if you made them cleaner. I said, what do you mean cleaner? I don't curse through my videos or anything like that. They said, no, 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 no. That's not what I mean. What I mean is you want them to be smooth. You want to remove any rambling that interferes with your main topic. But I, I kind of looked at them dumbfounded. And I said, well, have you ever seen any of my videos? Because that's all I've got. That That's all I do is ramble about weird stuff and incoherent things and just things that maybe happened to me once upon a time and I can tell you a story about it. That's that's all I've got. So I had have to erase the whole commentary on anything that I've put out there. I said, oh, why don't I just make videos with music in the background like everyone else? And they said, yeah, yeah, that's a good idea. So I had to end the conversation. I had to, this is this was the end of the whole conversation. I said, look, you don't understand what I'm trying to do here. And, and obviously you, the advice you're giving me may be good for someone who's doing something completely different, but it's definitely not for me. So I want to ask all of you out there, and I'm not saying that I would change anything that I'm doing. That's not what I'm saying. But would you rather I stop telling you stories, stop rambling, and just make the video about the subject that I'm putting in the video? Or do you like the stories and the ramblings and sometimes the nonsense that I try to share with you? Please let me know that in the comments below. And now let's relate this to you. Do you try and make what other people want you to make or do you or expect you to make or they try and give you advice on how to do something or do you just make the things that you're interested in making that you're passionate about and and just you know not that you're not paying attention to the people that if you're doing something for someone you're paying attention to that but if you're just doing something to do it to do your art to do your thing are you paying attention to what they're telling you giving you suggestions about or giving you advice about or are you just continuing to do the things that you do i've always been one of those people that i try and connect with people but not at the expense of what i'm trying to do so if i'm trying to do something very specific that's what i'm trying to do and some people will get it and some people won't and that's okay not everyone has to get everything all the time. That's okay. You're going to have your audience for what you're doing. And that's just how it's going to be. Now, as you can see, I did jack up that second moon a little bit. It doesn't really look anything special, but it's okay. I really enjoyed this drawing, but this one is coming to an end. I hope you enjoyed it. Please like it if you did. Here's a couple more videos that you might enjoy. And I'll see you in the next video. Bye.